greetings from the basement. Um, so there was no update on Monday because I was waiting because my post-op appointment was yesterday. And so I thought, ah, you know, it'll probably be more informative to tell them afterward. So my appointment was scheduled for 1245 up in Baltimore. Um, and so because traffic is just so bananas, it should take like an hour or maybe less, but you always have to leave basically two hours because also if you're more than 15 minutes late for your appointment, they will cancel you and bill you. So I was like, you know what, let's just meander up there. So I took basically the whole day off, canceled one student, moved another, um, and I got up there and checked in and they put me back out into the, like the little waiting rooms and then they put me in the doctor's office and then I waited. I waited and waited for like 45 minutes and I was getting mad. I was getting kind of steamed. And so after about like 55 minutes, I kind of went out in the hall and nobody was there. Phones were ringing. There were no doctors. There were no patients. There was nobody in like the pre-waiting room. I was like, what's going on? And so I walk out into like the main area in the vascular surgery department and there are eight or nine people in scrubs or white coats, like all over something. I'm like, this is not good. And so I went back the other direction to a place where I shouldn't have gone. And I think it's like the doctor's private offices. And there were like three people back there. I think they were PAs. Anyway, and I said, it seems like something really important is going on over there. Um, and I don't, I, if Dr. Lum is there, I certainly don't begrudge him because it seems like somebody's having a worse day than I am. And they're like, yeah, that's his patient. And um, he's not gonna make it to your appointment. And while I completely understand that, I don't, that's not even a problem. Clearly she's the priority. Um, and she, um, they were working on her there. Um, and I saw her wheeled out and she had a bunch of ice packs all over her. Um, but she was alive and seemed okay, but had something terrible happen. Anyway, but I was just kind of, I was a little bit pissed that they let me sit back there for almost an hour. All they had to do was just say, Sorry, we'll have to reschedule because something came up. Um, and the reason it's a big deal is not just because I am more and more assured of my own mortality every day, so wasted time is not just an inconvenience but is important to me, but also because coming back from Baltimore, and I live right near the Pentagon, which has its own insane traffic ecosystem starting at like 4 to 8.30 in the morning, and then from 4 till about seven or eight o'clock at night, it just makes the area around where we live just impossible to tra uh, traverse. It's just, it's the grossest traffic ever. Um, it makes LA traffic with all these, because LA you have options. There's different surface streets and if you're crafty, you know the canyons. Here it's like, there's like two ways, especially around the Pentagon because like this big thing's in the way and you know, you can't, you're not going to cut through Arlington Cemetery, which would be kind of like the other way. So it's just, it's just a pain in the butt, blah, blah. All of this is to say, though, that yesterday was not... Oh, and at the end, though, they, they, they sent me a PA. Now, I trust PAs. My, my general, like, my GP is actually a nurse. So I don't have a problem with anybody who's not an MD. Nurses and PAs have lots of information. But this was my post-op appointment. And I wanted to talk to the person who operated on me about what the operation looked like. And also, he and I have been going back and forth with email. Anyway, so she's like... But I mean, I work very close with him and I'm like, if you were in the operating room and saw this, we might want to talk, but otherwise, like, I need, I need the brand name. I need the real deal because I'm not here for medical advice. I'm here for a conversation. Anyway, so, so that kind of, that interaction was kind of nasty and I didn't like it. Um, and she took it really personally, which is like, I don't know. She, I felt like she was putting it back on me, whatevs. Um, we managed to make an appointment for two weeks from now, so we'll see about that. But the worst part of it, and this is for my other thoracic outlet people, I don't know about you, but for me, 
gravity is still the enemy. So I got home, it took me, it was about five hours of driving. Um, and the driving is the worst for this. Not only is it kind of gravity, but it's also, you know, I've, I've got like these bucket seats and I try to like sit a little bit like this and like ride dirty, like I try to like keep this back a little bit, but it's just the fact that, you know, you're looking up and I'm trying to keep this tucked, but this is not a great place to drive from. Like you kind of want to be like this, but this leads to the, anyway, by the end of it, I was wrecked. So I got home a little bit before five and took a cyclobenzaprine. Yeah, flexoril, yep, which is not something I take very often, and had shooting pains down both arms and stabbing pains here, and I was tired and extremely forlorn. <laughs> so, uh, and I just basically stayed in bed, got up to reheat some dinner, laid right back down. Um, and that is not something I had expected for over a month after the surgery, but it is a systemic thing. Also, I've been dealing with extreme headaches and they're not migraines, they're not the same brand, like I'm not sensitive to light um, or nauseated or any of those other symptoms. Um, and I've been looking because just there's a quality of pain that has changed on my right arm and the quality of the headache is a little bit different. And so I've been doing some research and I think I might have a little bit of involvement with C7 meaning cervical vertebrae 7, and T1, thoracic 1. So C7, you can feel, it's the big bump. And so the cervical spine is kind of stacked like this, and like the thoracic uh, starts this part of the spine, which is notoriously non-mobile, because cervical, like we're, we're doing all this all the time, so it's very, very flexible. And it's also where people get herniated discs a lot, just because we are moving it and putting stress on it a lot. Um, and then the thoracic spine is notoriously just like it moves kind of as a unit. It's kind of herky-jerky. And um, I've had massage therapists and PTs remark like, ooh, like it gives me the good hurt when somebody goes in there. But they're like, that is bound up a little bit. And so when, of course, nerves kind of flow out from this and I'm, I'm, I've been getting when I was doing this and this, which at first I thought might be epicondylitis, a.k.a. Uh, tendonitis here um, but it didn't respond to anti-inflammatories or ice which makes me think maybe the problem is somewhere else because believe me I've had tendonitis a bunch of times and although it sucks it's completely treatable like rest ice short course of anti-inflammatories every now and again some prednisone but it just didn't respond to any of that anyway so I think I'm going to try to go into my physiatrist slash osteopath Dr. Paul Brown up at Sinai, and just see what he thinks about that, um, because thoracic outlet syndrome makes you move your body differently because you'll do anything to avoid pain. And I have a feeling that doing this, this tuck, because doing this right now makes this feel good and makes me get a warm, tingling pain here, and it immediately starts sending, like, not extreme pain, but just like small shooting pains down my arm. And so I think over time, my body is just not adapted very well. No, that makes me sound like it's my fault. It's just my body's done the very best it could, right? But um, when things are not used to moving in the way that they're designed to move, I think it just is gonna take a little bit more retraining. Also, um, so I start physical therapy again next week. I've had two weeks off because the Metro has been uh, the, the stops between me and DC, they actually stopped so I can only go like to Reagan Airport or maybe Arlington Cemetery, but then it stops. I don't, it doesn't go into the district anymore. So um, I think after this next week, I have to re-up the physical therapy. So the insurance is demanding to see how not healed I am. So I think it's part of the reason also why they wanted me to have the post-op appointment because unfortunately it's not all about getting people well it's about saving people money and making people money um, and so they just want to make sure that like who would do that who would just go to too many physical therapy appointments just because what it was fun because people enjoy taking a couple hours off during their work day I don't get it um, 
anyway, so um, hopefully they'll say that I can have another six and hopefully another 12 weeks. Because this is a, a very long road now, I know. Um, and I'm not feeling acute pain, but I'm still incredibly limited. And it's disappointing. It is disappointing, I won't lie. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll let you know what's going on. Probably not Monday, but after my next physical therapy, I think that might be a Tuesday or Wednesday. Anyway, talk to you later.